Hello and welcome back to Seaside Garage and something pretty interesting. This is a bike, it's a pretty special bike though, pretty old bike. Vita Supedium, if you are watching this video, I think you will appreciate the bike itself. But on the bike is a clip-on engine. And this is a really interesting engine because this was produced in Germany just after the World War II. There was some limitations on what German manufacturers could build back then. They could not make any motorbikes larger than 60 cubics, I think it was, uh, after the war. This is 18 cubic. <laughs> it's, I think it's the tiniest engine that I have ever seen unless it's one of those Nitro engines for a remote controlled car. Not only is this a very tiny engine, this is also a diesel engine. Actually it's built to run on a lot of different kinds of fuels, paraffin and stuff like that. If you know a little bit about diesel engines you will know that they rely on self-ignition. There is no spark plug or no there is nothing to ignite the mixture other than compression itself. And for that to be possible, the compression needs to be pretty high. If the compression was really high on this engine, it would be really hard to start it because it is just a roller that is pressed against the wheel. So to start it, you will just have to bike along the road, making the roller spin, in turn spinning the engine. So it would be really hard with a high compression. Also, because this is possible to run on different kind of fuels, the self igniting time of the uh, of, of the fuel would be different from paraffin or diesel and petrol mix or something like that. So you will have to be able to get the right compression for that particular fuel to actually work. So this engine got variable compression. I have never heard about that. <laughs> I actually googled it the other day and I think Nissan is making an engine right now that they are calling the world's first variable compression engine but it's not true because this is also variable compression and we are talking back in the 40s on this one so it's really interesting so how is that variable compression actually made to show that i'm just gonna let you guys jump back in time because i have actually had that engine apart so let's rewind time a little bit Well, um, well, okay, okay. Let, let me show you. So I am about to put on the uh, the Solana head and sleeve and a barrel around it. It's a bit complicated, but firstly, take a look at this. This is the piston. I have not fitted the rings just yet, but take a look at the size. It's so tiny and nice. Anyway, on top of this goes what looks like a normal cylinder but actually the piston is not making compression in this bore because as you can see it's a lot bigger than the actual piston but this one actually goes onto the piston and then into that and then into that cylinder like that so this one got the uh, the intake ports and the exhaust ports and then you can see at the top end it got these grooves these grooves fits together with the Solana head, which is another place, because that is still attached to the uh, to the bike. Um, in there you can see those two notches, and then you can also see two cables. They are going to the handlebar, and if I turn the handlebar on the left side, you will see they turn. And when they turn, they will force this inwards and outwards again, in terms that will lower or raise the compression. So this is, it's a variable compression engine, which is amazing. Well, um, let's, let's go back to the future. So yeah, really interesting with that sleeve kind of thing that is actually spun using the handlebar up there and making it go in and out, making the compression higher or lower. Really interesting stuff. The engine doesn't have a carb either. It just has some kind of dripper mechanism. It's just pretty much a fuel valve up here, like you will get it in a carb for the fuel to get into the fuel bowl and then have a needle to close it up. You can just pull that needle out using the throttle, which is not really a throttle, uh, and making it drip faster or slower. Information of this, on this engine is really sparse. It's, it's a rare one. It's actually not 
a moped engine per se. It is a universal engine. The Lohmann diesel engine is supposed to be used on your bike, on your milking machine, on your boat. It's just meant to be able to clip it off stuff and put it on something else, which is really fun. What I want to do now is to take it outside and try and see if I can start it up. I'm going to use a drill for this. And if you want to do that, you need a drill with some power because you can burn them out pretty easily doing stuff like that. It's pretty tough on the entire machine. And another thing, I'm going to spin it on the roller down here on the bolt. When you do that, you will have to take extreme care not to strip the thread or strip the bolt because if suddenly the engine starts and you cannot pull it off quickly enough, it will twist and uh, it can be pretty intense on the hardware. So you have to be careful. On this one, it's a good thing that I can lower the compression and then start spinning it up and then slowly rising, raising the compression so I don't strain that area too much. The ideal thing, to be honest, is to use the bike to start it up and just ride it up and down the road. But I would like to show you guys so it will be a bit easier to be stationary at least. Or maybe it won't because the best thing would actually be to have both hands on the handlebar because I need to adjust compression and drip rate. But let's try and see if it works. I was advised to use a gas heater to heat the engine up before attempting to start it because that will make it easier. You know, a diesel engine got glow plugs. This one doesn't, but it would like, but it will be easier to start with a bit of heat. But I'm going to try without because, to be honest, it needs to be able to start without. Otherwise, it would be a bit of a task to use this moped. <laughs> so I'm going to try without. And if that doesn't work, then I'm going to go ahead and try to, uh, to heat it up. As mentioned, I got the possibility of changing the compression ratio and also the drip ratio of the fuel inlet. It's not a carb, it's just some kind of drip uh, mechanism. Um, so I'm going to start with a low compression to get it to spin. That way I won't put too much stress on the thread to begin with. Uh, but let's try. Add a bit of oil like that, open up the compression. I can smell the easel now. It smell like a you would get from a car where the glow box doesn't really work. So something is happening. I can start reading. It feels like it's just not getting a lot of fuel. It feels like it starts and then uses all the fuel and then not enough comes in there. feels like it's just running out. I just don't know why. I got it now. It seems as though uh, the adjustment on the on the fuel supplier uh, is a bit weird. I have to screw it out a bit, the entire assembly, to give it enough fuel. 
and then it's very difficult to balance the two stuff, compression and the drip rate, to get it to actually idle right. But I think it's pretty close to getting there. I'm a bit puzzled about why I have to unscrew the top part of that to give it enough fuel, so maybe the needle needs to be moved or something, or maybe it's just slightly clocked, that could also be the case. Just gonna give it one more try. It's really fun. Uh, a bit smelly though. Okay, so it's getting too dark now to try more, but it's now running, it's working. I still need to learn to how to how it works, so maybe some adjustment is still needed. Next time I would like to actually try to give it a go on the road, because I think it would be easier to control while I am on the bike and having the wheels spinning to keep the engine running until I get it just right and all that. So this will be all for this video. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.